Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to this beginner's guide to organic group session, and it's for May Camp 2016. And well, we're, we're all here, so we know it's May Camp. And before we start, I would like to do a little bit of introduction about myself. And my name is Finn, and this is my username. You can all see it. And I'm a graduate student at SI in the <coughs> University of Michigan, and. I'm the beginner in Jupo. Actually, I started taking Jupo class with Michael over there last year. So it's really like, I'm really new. It's like probably eight months right now. And about this session, it's I used organic group for one of my class project. And so this session is based on my experience and counter current appearance with organic group. And I want to just share my experience with you and like one really important thing, a big mistake I made in that in that project I want to share with you. So if you can remember, remember anything else, at least I, I hope you can rem remember this particular thing. And since we have very diverse group, um, I want to know, I want to know a little bit about like who's the beginner of Drupal? Who consider yourself as a beginner? And who never used organic group before. Okay, that's awesome. And you all heard about it, but you never used it before. And who has like a really vague idea about what you're going to use organic group for? Okay, good. Now let's go into it's today's agenda. We'll briefly talk about what is organic group and where we can start if we want to learn, and then actually how to teach myself, yourself, about how to use organic group, and then the question and answer. So organic group, it's a Drupal module, and everybody knows the module, right? Okay, awesome. And it actually, one big main function, is it adds a content types to the site content types? Okay, great. So um, two of them, one is group and one is group content. So for the group for the group content types, it's you have to add that first. So it's for say, I have, I have this one, I have group A and group B, and they're going for different purposes. So I want to separate them. It's a little bit harder and tricky to realizing if you're only using the group out of box function, but this organic group, it grants you with this. I can set the group as a group type and I create different kinds of groups within, and then I can do something for separate groups. And that's a comparing with the default setting of rows in Drupal. So um, we actually have a really interesting kind of animation here to tell the difference between rows and organic groups. So say we have those two are rows, moderator rows and authentic user rows in Drupal. And for the plain side without organic group module, we have all the moderator and we have all the authentic users. It's kind of hard to like say, if a moderator be wants to become authentic user, he will lose kind of his admission um, advantages of others. He, he cannot get access to some of the functions. He will lose it. And if, and he, if he want to keep those advantages, and, but still want to become, somehow want to become an uh, authentic user, it's all, I think the only way, easiest way to do is to create another account and grant him that, that account with an uh, authentic user. But with the organic group, it's a little bit different. So everybody you can see here are authentic users, but none of them are moderators. And we separate them into two different kind of groups using color. So the green color is one group, and uh, what do you call purple or, or orange or yellow? Okay, here is another group. And those are two users. They're just randomly packed. It's not like specific meanings. So user A, he's an authentic user. And he is the kind of administrator or moderator, quote unquote, in the green group. And B is just like a normal user in group, in orange group. But one day, A says, oh, um, I felt fun to join the orange group. Then he can just do this. 
But at the same time, you notice he still has this outline, outline, green outline. So that means he still keeps his moderator in group green. And the other day, B says, oh, um, I think I'm interested in creating another group for myself. So he moved out and you see he get the red color outline here and there's another group. But at the same time, it still keeps the filling of orange. That means it still uses all the function like a granted to <coughs> him or her as the normal users in group in group orange. So it goes back to the our previous slides. <coughs> That's the difference between the organic group and the plain side without the without this module. So um, talk about my own class project. I kind of come up because I'm I'm trying to develop a site to facilitate the table role playing games. And you know like in the in one of those play uh, games there's always be a <coughs> excuse me a game master and a several players. But at the same time the game master for one play can also be the regular normal players for other groups. So that's like that's the kind of a crossing of identity make me really confused on the playing side. So I'm thinking about and I talked with Michael and he he said like why not try this organic group? So I think, well, that sounds really a good idea. So I tried it. Actually, it's a perfect fit for me. But then, now I know it's a perfect fit. I really want to apply this module to my site. How should I do that? Let's quickly skip this one. Okay, where to start? So first, we'll look at the organic group page on Drupal. Oh, I already click on this one. So, um. <coughs> It will, so we actually just search organic groups. It will bring you to this page and it actually give you a overview of how everything, what this module is for and how everything goes. But actually, um, just a few detail things I want to know, notice if we go down to the very bottom. So yeah, we're, most of the people are still using Drupal 7 right now. So we're looking at this version 7.x this is very, very important. <coughs> Remember this one. <laughs> we'll come back to this later. So we know what's the, this version, that's 7.x. Then, oh, and another documentation is similar. Um, I believe if you Google it, you can also find it. Um, it's just a link here. And all the slides um, are up on the Drupal site, on the McCamp site, you can uh, you can go look at them later. So this is a documentation for organic groups. So those really helps to understand a little bit and then also they provide you with the, how to install the module on your site and some of the basic thing. But the actual, well, since this 30 minute session is now going to teach you one by one, step by step. So we have a lot of tutorial online, the videos, it really helps. I found a series, um, it's probably like 13 or 14 different parts composition and tells you how to use organic groups like step by step, that's really helpful. And you, I mean, I really encourage you to looking for those things and they're free out there and very helpful. But, and Google is a very, very good friend in helping you to looking for those resources, but, but, this absolute beginner's guide to organic groups. This is the when I was looking for the the how to the, and the guidelines things. That's what I found on Drupal. Uh, what I found on Google. The the link Google provides me. I was so happy when I found it. I said, awesome! There's I'm an absolute beginner, and this is for absolute <laughs> beginners. So um, I look at I'm right into it. So I when I found this. I'm right into it and see the session one setting. Let's do it. Okay. See the session one setting up, session two setting up blocks. So this is awesome and it's perfect fit to for my own purposes to set up the organic group. But it's really tricky. <coughs> Remember when we talk about the, the version of the organic group at 7.x? You cannot like you cannot see anywhere talk about version here. Like if we go up a little bit, well, actually I add this part, I add this section, <laughs> but it wasn't there when I was looking for this. So I, I 
I read through, I did my, I installed it, I practiced all the guide, but on the one point, I found something wasn't right. It's not exactly the same. I was confused, but I still trying to figure it out. And I did, but <clears throat> later on, I went back and looked at everything. And it's not until very end here. Okay, um, let's, um, oops, that a little bit too much. Um, see here, organic okay. group version 6.x, and everything below here is for the version 6.x. <laughs> That's where all the confusion comes from. <laughs> So I found this perfect documentation tell me how to guide me through, how to do the setup thing. It's really good um, and a lot of content is really helpful because it's not changed that dramatically but for the sum of the details, it really, like, it really paints me down. So it says, uh, and actually somebody else already did it. See, organic group version 7.x hyphen 1x and 2x so if you go there okay. see they have another introduction and they have another <coughs> whole <coughs> whole section telling you how to set up how to use it how to do the management and that's exactly what we should looking for when we are using the newest version of organic groups that's 7.x so um this is the most this is the most interesting i found out when i'm using organic group i'm trying to learn and teach myself how to do it so i think this should be also the part you remember when you're looking for how when you're looking for information and resources to teach yourself um, it may be really simple if you're following somebody else and like another person is sitting like in front of you and teach you one by one and hand by hand. But another thing like you sit in front of your computer and alone and trying to Google and find anything useful. Because it's really easy and tricky <coughs> to go to the first, very first and obvious one, absolute beginner, right? And you will not looking for the details since you will not check for how actually that one fits your own need. So I think that's the big thing I really want you to remember out of this session. And next, um, give it a try. So, <coughs> but what if I have other questions that the guy cannot answer? You can go to the Drupal answers. It's the, that's the link here and also there and there's a Drupal forum. I don't really know how um, how you frequently use them, but actually they're very helpful. So it's in the post installation. If you go there and post question there, other people, other users and members of the community will come at, uh, will come up and answer your questions. Well, actually, I'm pretty good on time. Um, okay, this is uh, officially. <laughs> Announcement, make camp sprint, it's for Sunday. And I'm pretty sure you'll see it. Um, question and answer part. Uh, yeah. What would you use organic groups for um, mm -hmm. in a, like a business setting? I know you said that you yeah. your class project was to like, right. you, for a, a gaming thing. Right, for a gaming yeah. thing. So um, I asked one of my instructor and she actually provided me a very useful so this is the site of the UMS oh oops okay um oops so um can you see that in clean enough so this is the medical school's page for the University of Michigan and the hospital system, they actually, the whole hospital system, it's mostly based on the Drupal and because they have different departments and they have different um, 
in a department and they have their like within each department they have on their focusing groups so organic group it's very helpful to separate like faculty and stuff from one like one focus group from another so they will not intervene each other but they have the fully advantage like administrative power within their own group and you wouldn't be able to do that with native Drupal functionality like the groups and users that you are role, role model you can but it's really tricky like um, remember that slides of animation I made mm -hmm. yeah if we look at that one it's the the roles are fixed there like certain roles have certain kind of powers and um, limitation so if you want to change that you change everything in between but for the organic group it's like within the group it won't function like it won't affect the whole like user setting okay. that's good enough? yeah okay thank you uh yeah i don't know this might be helpful to you and you can just tell me if this, this sounds like it's true, the, the, the kind of a, a situation where we've been thinking about using it is um, sort of, again, having groups within a particular site and being able, so I think as you were saying, mm -hmm. one person might be an, kind of an administer, administrator for one group, but just a participant of another group. You can't do that exclusively with girls. Okay. Well, yeah. 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 Or if you can, it's really difficult. But uh, I think it also gives you the ability, doesn't it, to like have content that's only accessible to a particular group. Well, that was what I was curious oh, about. Oh, yeah. If you could actually... Exactly. That's... Um, to... And I think you might be able to do that with roles, but yeah. you wouldn't... You know, you have more options in terms of allowing people to join or leave a group where they, it'd be harder to have them join or leave a role, I think. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult because mm -hmm. roles are set and you can sign people to different roles, but it's really tricky because mm -hmm. if you want to change a specific access to a specific person, you don't want to change the other mm -hmm. users within that role. So, um, yeah, that's one thing I actually didn't mention in the organic groups, the, the content type about group and group content. So if you create a node in, uh, in the content type of group content, then it should be well you you don't have to but usually it's signed to a specific group and then under that circumstance the um, it can be decided the visibility like who can who can view who can have access who can edit that well edit it is another part but like who can view this specific node only the group member or everybody every authentic user on this site or like just everybody like even anonymous users so it would be really helpful if you only have this information or content want to show within your group. Yeah, and only group members can see that. Yeah, and thank you. So now I'm seeing like how it looks in the admin. Um, does it, everywhere that you can do role, where mm -hmm. you can assign things to certain roles, does, it, does the group thing kind of, is it in the same general area where you would say like, yes. if, if it's a black or if it, whatever it might be, like it's stuff that you can set roles yeah. to, you can set groups to? Um, actually, I do have one site. It's a uh, it's a demo site I'm building for my other client, and we can take a really quick, really quick look at this one. So we have group one here. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And see, we have group, and we have people here. Um. See, we have element. And this is, oh, oh really, we have, per, we have permissions. This is we only, but yeah, we do have this ad group, admission group, and ad, ad, and delete content, and all those. So it's really similar to the rows in, in the whole, like, size-wise, but this is specific for this group. Yeah. And I see somebody behind there. I was just wondering, how do roles and groups interact with each other? So if you're mm -hmm. a, a moderator for the site and your role, can you have groups overlaid on top of that? Uh, may I rephrase that a little bit? So you mean if I'm the moderator of the whole site, what will be my role with a particular group? It depends. So for a group, it's actually like, um, I'm not saying exclusively, but like a group has its own settings. Like admin can always be admin, but like if you're a moderator, you may be like if you create this site, like you you create this 
group, you probably are like the default element of this group. But if you add it to this group, or you like you uh, apply for like to, um, I want to be one member of this group. It depends on how like your your role within that particular group. So it doesn't really um, affect each other. But also it depends on how the moderator itself, the the roles of the permission of the moderator is that it it may it it may have influence. But generally speaking, yeah, it depends on. If you are a man, admin of this group, you have all those. But if you're a group member, it's just like a normal, common group members. Can you add organic groups after you've already set your permissions and roles? In yes, okay. yes. But my recommendation is you, if you want to use organic group, do not wait to, like, to, to be too late, like after everything is almost done, because it, mm -hmm. it might create some of kind of confusion, because they do add two different, like two new content type to the whole site. So if you want to adjust the content type, it may cause a little bit confusion, but it's doable. Yeah. Is this concept, is this concept native to um, Eve? Uh, Drupal 8, or is it still a, uh, would it be a module? I believe I'm they- I'm quite sure it's still considered a module. Yeah. I don't think there's yeah. anything in the core. Okay. But because my I started using this with Drupal seven, so I haven't really tried organic group I'm in Drupal curious. eight. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. So I think yeah. that uh, another I'm, I'm sort of testing if this would make sense with organic groups. If you yeah. want to have different groups, mm -hmm. and you want them to be able to, to oh, sort of not just admit, I, there was a scenario we ran in is I, I want the members of the group to be able to change who the administrator is without having to go to the site administrator. And so you were, you're, but but obviously not be able to change the administrator of another group. Right. Yeah. So I'm able to give somebody permission within a group, which is to allow somebody else to become the moderator and then remove right. himself. And if, I, I couldn't think of any other way to do that other than something like organic groups. And that's why we've been looking at it is for those kinds of things. Yeah, totally. Um, actually, let me see if I can get a really quick demo on this site. So see we have people here and this group only has two people and the student one is like added and let's see. So see if we check this checkbox, it says administrator member. So that means we made this member to be the administrator of this group. So just one one checkbox and we'll save it and that's done. Yeah. So that's really quick and easy. And doesn't affect any other groups or the actually the whole site setting for this row. It's still like oh. it's still student. Yeah. Any other questions? Is, it, is anyone else using organic groups so that they can tell us how they're using it? No. The session actually goes through D8 to use organic groups as a way of helping with workbench issues and workflow issues, but uh, there really isn't anything baked into organic groups that would kind of help with moderation and notification. Is there? It's just, just truly just a kind of more granular rules. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's organic groups fall into a node access module, of which there's several of them. Similar things differently. What's nice about organic groups is it's throwing a really pretty UI on it for managing the access within what it's referring to as a group. Yeah, um, so I may just add a little bit more things, extra things. Um, how many people know views? Okay, great. So using views, you can, like, as the site developer, actually can sign different groups with a specific view. That's basically saying like the content of this group, and then when they log in and they when they like default settings, like when looking at the page they're logging, they can just look at their own group's view. And I think that's a very nice way to separate different groups on your site, especially if they are very different in interest in focusing. You can just guide them directly to their own focus group without like trying to navigate themselves through all the other things and be kind of like wasting time, all of it distracted for other things. I think that's very helpful. Yeah, we've done something similar like that for a travel website where individuals were able to create a trip and add people to their trips and they could be 
like the administrator could actually could be part of several different groups, but if you were part of a group that would be content we've never seen. Yeah, and for the, and also, I mean, like the, the thing we just talked about is like for the group thing and for the individual because an individual can belong to several different groups and have a view of that coming up, seeing like how many groups I'm belonging to and how many things are coming up. And that's, I think it's very also a very neat feature of the site if they can do that, just be more focused and do whatever I, I like I'm interested in, I want to do at this point. If you if you're in a group and you create group content, can you make that accessible to everybody on the site and mm -hmm. they're just visiting your site, or is the group content very specific to only the people in the group? Um. I will say that in two different ways. Like first, general speaking, yes, you can make that visible to like whoever you want it visible to. But then second, I will back up a little bit, saying it depends actually at how the original settings of that particular because this visibility access thing is they can also have a general setting say like i want this group to be i want this whole like group content to be only visible to my group by the admin or he or she the admin can just say like it's okay for the my group member to set wherever they want to be so yeah it really grants you a lot of freedom Okay.